Welcome back to Guild 22. My name is Capri Gill, and in today's video, I've got something a little different for you guys, something I don't usually do. And if you're wondering why I have my laptop off to the side, I don't even know if you can see that or not, but today I'm actually going to be reacting to another video titled Why the Trucking Industry is So Fragmented and Chaotic Made by CNBC. Anyways, let's not waste any time. Apparently they cover a lot of information. So let's just jump right into it. But real quick before I do, I do need to mention that only 18% of you watching this video right now are subscribed to my channel. And I'm gonna be putting out a lot of great trucking and business related videos over the next few weeks that you don't want to miss out on. So make sure you scroll down, like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you're the first to know when I post a video. All right. Now let's get into the video. Oh my God. Real quick, I just realized what, what sweatshirt I'm wearing. I just saw my reflection in my laptop and just, I have no words. Just try and ignore it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trucking is a highly fragmented industry where it takes little more than a commercial driver's license and a truck to get into business. Yeah, you know what? That's that's all it takes. It's just a little more than a CDL that takes months and months to complete and thousands of dollars to receive and a truck and trailer, not to mention that costs as much as a nice house in the Midwest. But but no, you're right. You know, that's all it takes. I just started this video and CNBC is already talking crazy, but let's just keep going. This makes it an appealing choice for workers looking to earn wages or even start their own companies but it means the industry is subject to extreme boom and bust cycles. Now, I don't see how truckers joining the industry contributes to the boom and bust cycles. I mean, boom and bust cycles happen in every industry and it's just a natural part of the economy. So I don't know how the two relate. A large share of truck driving schools have shut down, some permanently, and there are shortages of new trucks, which need to be replaced every few years. Drivers are badly needed, and the trucking industry has a very high turnover rate. All right, so this topic of driver shortage comes up a lot, especially if you've been in the industry as a carrier. However, what most people fail to realize is that the driver shortage is just a side effect of the main disease, which is driver turnover. Now, as a carrier and a business owner, I think you can either blame all of this on the drivers or you can take some responsibility and improve the driver experience in your company instead of just handing out $20,000 sign-on bonuses. I mean, just think about it for a second. You're incentivizing drivers to jump from jump around from company to company with these crazy sign-on bonuses and inflated pay rates that you offer. Yeah, offering that stuff will help you find a lot of drivers. However, a majority of them will leave when they realize that they have to work 100 hours a week and have no home time for a whole year just to get that bonus and expected pay rate. No one wants to do that type of work and no one can physically do that for a long period of time. So of course there's gonna be a high turnover rate. Anyways, this is a topic that I'll just leave for another video. They're always looking for the, the next company that's gonna pay them the most. It's not uncommon for a truck driver to have several jobs in one year. Again, this just goes back to what I was saying. You know, people don't like change. So the fact that drivers are switching jobs so frequently is indicative of how bad most companies are in the trucking indus industry and not the employees. You know, I mean, at Guild 22, we haven't had a single employee quit in the past three years. And not only that, but 35% of our drivers that we hired in our first year as a company still work for us. Now, trust me, I'm not saying all of that to brag or boast or anything like that. I'm just trying to show you guys the other side that no one talks about. If you look out for your drivers and you pay them very well and you give them autonomy over their work and you give them a reason to fully trust you and your company's vision, they will have no reason to leave. Our drivers, they they recognize that what these big companies are trying to lure them in with, such as these crazy sign-on bonuses, isn't worth losing what companies like Guild 22 can provide. But anyways, let's keep watching. 
Impending technological shifts, such as autonomously driven trucks, may change all of that. This could have huge implications for the future of the industry and for the roughly 3.5 million truck drivers now on America's roads. All right, so I've talked about autonomous trucks like the Tesla Semi in the past. And if you want to watch that video, you can check it out after this. But my thoughts on autonomous trucks in general is that it's going to take a very, very long time to make it the new normal. Uh, and that's due to many reasons, such as uh, lack of adequate infrastructure, uh, resource shortages, government regulations, etc. And also, I don't think that it's going to put drivers out of a job. I think it will just open up the industry to drivers with less, less experience and training. I think it will, it will just help get more people into the industry and reduce the skill necessary to get behind the wheel. Um, that's really about it. You know, I don't think there is a huge need to panic when it hasn't even come to fruition yet. Trucking is far more fragmented than shipping is. The top 10 shipping carriers represent 85% of shipping capacity. The top 10 trucking companies, on the other hand, only account for about 12% of the total trucking capacity. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually kind of really wild. You know, I, I knew the trucking industry was fragmented, but it's kind of crazy to see how the top 10 trucking companies like, you know, Night Swift, uh, who else is in the top? JB Hunt, XPO Logistics, Old Dominion, you know, just huge companies in general that have thousands of trucks in their fleet only account for 12% of trucking capacity. Again, fragmentation, in my opinion, isn't an issue within itself, but it just goes to show you how many trucking companies there are out there. And with that many companies competing for the same pool of drivers, of course, there's gonna be a high turnover rate because a vast majority of trucking companies are just copying each other. They don't differentiate themselves from their competitors and they don't provide any incentive programs to increase driver retention. And on top of all that, they work their drivers like crazy for basically $20 an hour. And then these companies wonder why there's a driver shortage, you know, because who wouldn't want to do that type of work? Anyways. The reason the industry is so fragmented starts with the fact that the barriers to entry are quite low. Whereas it costs tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars in at least a couple years to build a single ocean-going container ship, a new truck can be bought for $150,000 to $200,000. Yeah, again, guys, it's, it's only $150,000 to $200,000. You know, that's literally all you need to get started in trucking. Uh, forget about freight management systems, spot rate negotiation, industry compliance, insurance. Just forget about all that stuff because... According to CNBC, if you have $150,000, which I'm sure everyone just watching this video has that laying around somewhere. Yeah, so if you have $150,000, you can start your own trucking company. Obviously, I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic, but when you say stuff like that, it just comes across as being um, tone deaf or just ignorant in general. You know, you try to make the trucking industry look very black and white, but it's not like that at all. I get that you're just trying to make it easy for your viewers to understand what you're talking about. But when you constantly skip over these little details, you give your viewers a false sense of expertise. I mean, this video alone has around 764,000 views last I checked. And I bet a lot of people left that video thinking that all they need to become a carrier or owner operator is a loan for $150,000, which is not true at all. As with just about any other industry, when demand is strong, businesses are incentivized to take advantage of higher prices. They purchase more trucks, hire more drivers, and boost wages to attract workers. But these are thousands of small companies, often ones that are not sharing information and that are each acting in their own interests. So yeah, uh, with any business, when there's a boom, you can charge more, hire more employees, pay higher wages. It's it's Econ 101, you know, stuff you learned in high school, but I don't understand why it was necessary to include that last part where he said that most of these companies aren't sharing information with each other. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that common across most businesses in most industries, if not all industries? Not everyone is expected to do what I'm doing on YouTube and just share information for free because information can be a huge competitive, competitive advantage for one company over another. So why would you give that away? I personally do it because 
I know that I have a lot more competitive advantages to lean on. And besides, if your business only has a competitive advantage in information, you will lose. Or that's just my belief, to be honest. But again, another topic for another day. A truck has a short life. Trucking companies expect to get about three years of good use until they turn it over to the used market, where it will be bought by shipping ports or customers who use trucks for less strenuous tasks. As of September 2021, there is a nine-month wait for a new truck, and some manufacturers are not even taking new orders. Yeah, so as he mentioned, because of what happened in 2020, I, I think we all know what I'm referring to. I just can't say the name of the virus because... I don't want this video to get flagged, but anyways, because of what happened in 2020, resource shortages have been on the rise, which led to less truck and trailers being produced, which led to carriers holding onto their trucks for a longer period of time, which in turn led to the price inflation in the used truck market. Again, I have a whole video talking about this that you can watch after this video, and all links will be in the description below. The second big issue is labor. Competition among trucking companies for drivers can be brutal. This is in part because there are so many of them and there is not much that differentiates one from another. Exactly, see, I, I literally just said the same thing. The employee driver turnover rate in the industry can be quite high, about 80% at larger carriers as of September 2021. A lot of that turnover is made up of people moving from one company to the next. With truck drivers, they tend to jump around different companies, uh, just depending on who's paying the most. Okay, so see now, this is where I disagree. You know, in every industry, there are employers that will pay more than another employer will for the same work. But why is it that in those industries, the employee turnover rate isn't as high? Of course, higher pay is very attractive, but why aren't teachers quitting their jobs six to seven times a year? You know, why aren't accountants joining new firms eight times a year. At some point, we as carriers have to take a look at what we're doing in order to retain the high quality drivers. And you can't just keep blaming the workers on this, you know? Now, I'm not saying that that's what this lady is doing. You know, I'm just speaking generally because I see this attitude all across the industry. Also, I don't wanna make it seem like drivers are completely blameless either. You know, a lot of them are in a gold rush and they're trying to jump around and see who will offer them the biggest paycheck and biggest sign-on bonus. But the difference is that those drivers will eventually learn from their mistake and realize that what they're chasing doesn't exist. However, most carriers on the other hand refuse to take any accountability for creating a toxic, unstable cycle that draws in unsuspecting drivers through their large claims of sign-on bonuses and pay rates, but when the driver actually joins, they realize that they have to work 100 hours a week and be on the road for weeks and months on end, you know? And they also have to stay at the company for the whole year to receive the full sign-on bonus that they were promised. Obviously, this leads to a majority of the drivers leaving and jumping to another company, hoping for something different. And the cycle just keeps going on and on like this, which is why I personally refuse to have my company participate. Just remember, unrealistic expectations will always lead to unexpected turnover rates. I think that should be like a quote or something. Hankins would like to retain more drivers, but frequently finds people are lured away by the promise of a pay increase as modest as a few cents per mile. As modest as a few cents per mile? You do realize that those few cents add up to thousands and thousands of dollars at the end of the year? Again, this is where understanding the details of what you're talking about would have helped. When we do feel like there's a good driver that we're gonna have for a while, there's another company that could pay them an extra five or maybe even 10 cent more and I can't you know, compete with that. I know that's not a lot of money, but over uh, a course of per mile, it, it tends to add up. You have to be joking. I. Honestly, I can't take you seriously if as a carrier, you're saying that a 10 cent per mile difference is not a lot of money. If it's not a lot of money, how can you not compete with other carriers? Also, just a heads up for any business owner that wants to start a fleet in the future. If you're ever in the position where most companies around you are offering 10 cents per mile more than what you're offering, you're either A, drastically underpaying your employees, 
or B, you don't know how to run a trucking company. There's no in between. And if you can no longer afford to compete with these companies, you will lose. End of story. Also, if this is a good driver, like you claim, you have to do everything in your power to get them to stay. Part of what makes a good driver is their loyalty. So a difference of a few cents isn't enough for them to leave you. But obviously, if you don't respect them enough to pay them what they're worth and someone else is willing to pay them 10 cents per mile more for the same work, of course, they're going to leave. And as I mentioned before, as a small company, you shouldn't be competing with large corporations in terms of pay because they can always spend a lot more money on driver pay than you can. So you have to get a little creative and offer a better and more personal driver experience, as well as offer a pay that is fairly competitive with what the big carriers are offering. You know, that's how you get drivers to join and stay for the long run. Several of the largest trucking companies have raised pay in the last several months. Knight Swift raised pay to 50 cents per mile for experienced drivers. Speaking of a 10 cent per mile difference, at Guild 22, our base pay starts at 60 cents per mile, and that's without any of the safety bonus or detention pay. And also that rate goes up every year driver sticks with us. So do you kind of see why we never lose drivers? You know, we're one of the highest paying trucking companies in the US, and it's not like we're a huge company. We're a small business, but we're very picky when it comes to choosing our drivers. And we make sure that the drivers that we pick will want to stick with us for the long run. That's kind of what you have to do if you're a small trucking company. You know, just to get the drivers in, you have to get a little creative with your advertising and marketing. And to get them to stay, you have to pay them a lot more than what other companies are paying them. Oh, and by the way, feel free to submit an application to join our team as a company driver or owner operator at www.guild22.com slash careers. You know, you might be you might be one of the lucky few. And also, if you want to learn how we're able to run a successful trucking company and pay our drivers some of the highest wages, make sure you scroll down, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of my videos. I'm always exposing some of the best business tricks that have helped me grow over the years. So yeah, with that self promo out of the way, let's keep watching. That means if a driver covers about 100,000 miles per year, they can make about $50,000. Median pay for the industry was $47,130 in 2020. Making $47,000 per year doesn't sound too bad. I believe you need to make at least $30,000 in most states to be considered a middle class. But what this statistic doesn't show you is how many hours drivers have to work per week to make that $47,000. Being a truck driver is not like having a normal nine to five. You know, some days you won't work at all, and some days you'll be driving or dealing with paperwork and dispatchers all day. So that's why when you sit down and calculate your per hour rate, you find out that you're making as much as a Starbucks barista, but I'm gonna make a whole nother video exposing this stuff soon, so make sure you subscribe. Truckers spend a lot of time on the road and the lifestyle presents a lot of difficulties. Truck drivers have high levels of obesity and other health problems, and personal health remains one of the biggest reasons for the high turnover rates in the business. Yeah, that's that's pretty true. Health problems are a huge issue among truckers. I mean, health problems are a huge issue for most Americans in general, but if you have to sit in a truck for long periods of time with limited access to healthy food options or training facilities, it's, it's obviously hard to stay in shape. Now, it's not impossible to work out a little when you're fueling or waiting at a dock and watch what you eat. But yeah, I can see how it's harder for some people. There are also big challenges finding parking, which means it is hard for truckers to find a safe and comfortable place to spend the night after a full day on the road. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who are not in the industry or who are not truck drivers, truckers have to usually find the nearest Walmart to park at if they're driving overnight. And kind of the goal at Guild 22 that I have, like a personal goal, is as the company starts to grow bigger and bigger, we'll be able to buy a huge space near the highway uh, across the nation, that would be kind of cool, and just offer free parking for truckers. You know, it's, it's a much needed 
uh, development that needs to happen. There isn't really a good market solution available for that kind of problem, according to industry analysts, and parking for freight carriers isn't really a top political priority, even as far as transportation issues are concerned. I think that's going to be changing soon, though, with Biden's new infrastructure plan. Now, whether you like him or not, I don't really care. You know, let's just leave the politics out of this. The, the plan that he's trying to implement, I believe, is a much needed long term solution to our current supply chain issues. But I think in general, it's just going to help out the trucking industry. And I believe they're also going to be building new parking for truck drivers as well. So all in all, it looks good to me. But if you want me to talk about the trillion dollar plan that was signed, leave a comment down below and I'll make an in-depth video on it. Truck drivers don't have much control over their own schedules and often have to wait, sometimes hours, for crews to load or unload their trucks. These crews often have their own schedules and have little incentive to move faster to help a driver get back on the road. Yeah, that's, that's true. You know, the loading times for live unloads are very inconsistent and cost everyone involved a lot of money. However, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I like to keep up on trucking news and Every day I hear new startups being funded millions and millions of dollars that promise to have a solution to this problem. So yeah, I think as technology and infrastructure develops, this will become less of a problem. It's not uncommon for a truck driver to sit somewhere six to 10 hours a day just to wait to be loaded or wait to be unloaded. In my years of experience, six to 10 hours of loading time is pretty uncommon, I would say. It's more like two to four hours that's common with the shippers that we work with. And only sometimes do we need to wait five, six, seven hours, you know, but I wouldn't say it's that common. I don't know, maybe I'm just cherry picking, but if my drivers had to wait seven, eight hours, a few days a week to get loaded, it, it would be complete chaos. The trouble is truck drivers are only allowed to drive so many hours a day, and the amount of time they spend loading or unloading can count against that. These kinds of challenges incentivize a lot of drivers to seek out the best pay per mile they can find. Pay drivers a portion of the detention that you receive. Problem solved. You know, another case of carriers trying to pocket as much money as they can and then act surprised that drivers are leaving for higher paying companies. The challenge lies in the fact that the trucking industry is so dependent on drivers. You can't have a trucking company without drivers, and if a merger or an acquisition by one company of another angers the drivers, they might leave and go somewhere else. What are the chances that CNBC mentions autonomous trucks as the solution to all of these problems? Let's find out. It is possible that the industry could see more consolidation, and there are some technological innovations that could help that along. One is autonomous or semi-autonomous driving. Removing the driver from the truck removes one of the biggest variables involved in keeping a truck on the road. A truck without a driver would remove the challenge of recruiting and retaining drivers and allow companies to scale more easily. Yeah, and um, imagine if we could fly, you know, we wouldn't have to walk anywhere. I'm just kidding. I'm, I think I'm coming across as someone who hates autonomous trucks, which is the furthest thing from the truth. You know, if you watch some of my past videos, you know that I believe in the technology, but so many things need to change and so many problems need to be resolved before fully autonomous trucks are the new normal. You know, we haven't even fully mastered autonomous personal vehicles yet. So what makes you think the government is going to let Siri control an 80,000 pound death machine? You know, again, I fully believe in its potential and I do think the future is headed that way, but I think people are getting way too excited about it too quick. I compare it to crypto, you know, cryptocurrencies. Most people don't fully understand how it works, but they sure pretend like they do. It promises to eliminate a large portion of the operating cost of a truck. It gives the ability for a truck to operate for longer hours than what a driver can do. And frankly, eliminates a lot of the lifestyle issues that drivers have to contend with. Oh, by the way, shout out to Craig Fuller. You know, if you guys don't know him, um, that's him. He's the CEO of Frightwaves, and he's very, very knowledgeable about the trucking industry. Anyways, Craig just said that he believes there, there will be point-to-point -point autonomous trucks in 2030, which is what I predicted in my Tesla Semi video a few months ago, not to flex on you, Craig, but I think I said it was going to take something like 8 to 10 years, so yeah, I definitely agree with him there. 
And yeah, I mean, autonomous trucks will provide a huge cost saving to carriers during the middle mile portion of a delivery, but the first and last mile, in my opinion, might still need to be done by someone in a truck. And that may mean that most of the work being done by truckers will be local work and they will have a better work-life balance. Also, because carriers are able to save a lot more money with autonomous trucks, they will be able to um, pay much higher rates to those truckers working local loads. So hopefully it's a win-win for everyone, but I have a feeling it's not going to be. Once there is autonomous driving, massive consolidation becomes a lot more feasible because it will allow companies to achieve economies of scale, just as ride-sharing companies have done. That's another great point, you know? Autonomous trucks will allow economies of scale, which means that they'll be able to ship more stuff at a lower cost, which in turn means they can charge less and force smaller companies out of business. So yeah, just all around fun stuff that we're talking about. But again, not a, new, not a huge need to panic, in my opinion. You know, large trucking companies already enjoy economies of scale, but they only make up 12% of the national trucking capacity. And that number will definitely go up, but not to the degree that people think it will. In the meantime, trucking companies continue to rely on drivers and drivers continue to make the best of a life on the road. You get to see the United States and how beautiful it is. Going to the countryside, going to, through cities, going through mountains. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. Traveling uh, in Florida, you get to see a lot of the tropical side of Florida. Truck drivers mainly stay in trucking, I believe, just so that they can get away and not be confined in an office, really be able to get out and explore the, the United States. Yeah, I mean, I think she's spot on with that. Uh, trucking is not an easy career at all, but the people that stick with it do it because of the benefits of being out on the road and driving in peace outweigh any of the flaws that the industry can throw at them. By the way, if you made it this far into the video, let me know in the comments by telling me why you started driving a truck and if you still love it as much as you did when you started. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up the video. You know, I feel like a lot of information was covered in that video. Um, some stuff that I disagreed with and some that I agreed with. And if you found any of my commentary useful, Feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications. And also if you're an owner operator, company driver or dispatcher looking for a high quality, high paying carrier to work with, feel free to submit an application at www.guilt22.com slash careers. And finally, while you're still on our website, feel free to download any and all of our templates at www.guilt22.com slash templates. They're free for everyone watching this video and They'll just help you make more money. So why not download them? Anyways, with that being said, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.